Hello! I'm going to make some kombucha tea today. I have a batch that's uh, ready to be transferred into other containers so I can flavor it. And um, so I need to make a new batch. I just started doing this pretty recently. Having some issues with heartburn and such. And I don't know, talking with some friends that were kind enough to say, here, give this a try. And wow, what a difference. So I, start, I started making my own. And uh, we were talking the other day about uh, how to go about flavoring it, um, you know, with fruit and, and, and such. And there's a few different ways you can do it. Um, I just cut my fruit up into small pieces, put it in the jars. You can blend it. You can, there's spices, all kinds of different things you can do. Um, but uh, the uh, store-bought stuff leaves, leaves something to be desired for sure. Uh, it's uh, just tastes a whole lot better when you make it yourself. There are all kinds of health benefits. It's good for your guts. Uh, helps my heart burn and other people's, I guess. So uh, anyway, I'll just show you how I make mine and uh, maybe something will help somebody else. So stick around and let's get started. Here in this pot, we've got 10 cups of water. Now, I'm not gonna show you uh, me filling it with 10 cups of water because frankly, if you don't know how to put 10 cups of water in a pot, you probably shouldn't be doing this anyways, and you're probably a danger to yourself and others. Anyway, here's some jars of, and a couple of bottles that have some finished kombucha in them. That's what I put them in when it's done. And this is the brewing tea. We've got our scoby up here. Was able to get a, a piece of that from some friends. Thank you for that. It's growing real well. This is the mother of the whole project right here. You need yourself some uh, some cane sugar, raw cane sugar, one cup of that, and then you need some black tea. Now I've just been using tea bags. I, I try to find some uh, just uh, uh, bulk raw uh, black tea. You can use green tea also, but. Uh, I guess like everything else at the grocery store, first you can't find toilet paper, no, I can't find tea that's not in a tea bag, but it works, so good enough. All right, let's get going. All right, so we're gonna turn on the burner. We're gonna bring our water to a boil. And then we're gonna add our tea to it. We'll just get, the, get that, those tea bags ready while I'm waiting for that to boil. And we'll go on to the next step. You know they say a watch pot never boils? Well, I really wasn't watching it that close, so it's doing pretty well. Well, we've got a light boil going now, so I'm gonna call that good enough. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, turn that burner off and get our tea going. You're supposed to use two tablespoons of, uh, of raw tea. Um, I did four tea bags the first time, worked pretty good. Um, decided it was maybe a little stronger than it needed to be, so I've been using three and that's been working just fine. Set my kitchen timer for 10 minutes and just let those steep. All right, 10 minutes are up. Our tea's been soaking. Look at that. Looks steep enough to me. So now we're gonna take these uh, tea bags out. We have a spoon to stir everything with. Squeeze those out real good. Yeah, that's warm. And now I'm going to slowly stir in my sugar. Mm. 
So the tea and the sugar, that's food. Scoby's gonna love this stuff. Alright, so we got the sugar stirred in real well. So now I gotta let that cool, get that down to room temperature because we don't want to cook our scoby. We want our, our scoby to be healthy and, and, and fresh and you know it's a living living creep thing over there, so definitely don't want to cook it. <coughs> uh, when the uh, when this new batch of tea here is is uh, just about to room temperature, then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start getting my fruit ready. I'm gonna put that in my jars. That will put the old batch of tea that's been fermenting for the last four days. We're going to dump that into those jars. And then this will go in their place. And so that's going to be a couple hours because this needs to cool down. Uh, so uh, we'll be back with that shortly. All right, the tea is almost room temperature. So I'm going to start cutting up my uh, fruit. <coughs> so I'm getting that in my jars. Uh, so I can pour the tea in out of the jar that's been sitting here fermenting for four days and we'll make room for the new batch. Now my wife tells me I've become a bit of a mad scientist with my uh, kombucha, but hey, it works. So you gotta make sure you can get it the best you can. What I'm gonna do right now, I'm gonna cut up my fruit and get that ready to put in the jars. Um, I've been getting by with about three jars. I really don't measure my fruit. So I make enough to do four jars, and then if I don't need four jars, I just put the leftover uh, fruit that I cut up in the original three that I had. So let's get started with that. All right, so I've got some canning jars. I'm gonna put some fruit in, some other glass jars that I had some other things in. This is actually from olives. Strawberries, I took the leaves off already, so I'm just gonna cut those up. And I have myself a kiwi. So I'm gonna cut my strawberry in half. Flip it down, slice it thinly that way, slice it thinly this way. Have some nice little chunks. This is not an exact science. If you put it in a blender, you don't have to worry about this. You don't have to worry about any getting to a specific size or anything like that. <clears throat> I like to do this because I don't have to worry about leftover strawberry chunks in my finished product because I strain it out when I put it in the finishing jars. Getting a pretty good pile of strawberries going here. Well, that's going to add some real nice flavor to that tea. It's going to be better than anything you're ever going to buy at the store. That stuff, ooh. I tried it. I gave it a fair shot. Yuck. Make your own, man. So if you recall, I mentioned that uh, once we get that tea in with that scoby, that's going to sit there for four days. After that's done, we put the fruit in our jars. We, we transfer the tea into these canning jars or whatever kind of glass jar you have. And... It's going to sit there for another four days in an anaerobic type fermenting. Okay. The longer you let it sit, the more fizzy it's going to get after you put it in the jars um, with, your, with your fruit or whatever you happen to have. Um, so if you like a lot of fizzy, maybe let it sit a little longer. If you let it sit too long, it's going to start to get kind of vinegary and you may not like that. So you got to kind of watch that. Strawberries done. Now we're going to get going on the kiwi. Again, I'm going to cut it enough for four jars, even though I'm probably going to need three. I just want to be ready just in case. Because I didn't measure my fruit. Slice it one way, slice it the other way. Cube it real small. All right. Time to start filling the jars. Get a little that in the bottom, 
little strawberry, little kiwi in there. And yeah, maybe 10%, 15% of the jar will fill with uh, the fruit, which is going to flavor our, our kombucha. All right, so we got some strawberries, we got some kiwi in all the jars here. Now we just need to double check the temperature on that tea and see if that's cooled down room temperature. Once that is at room temperature, we're going to put it in these jars and then it's going to sit there for four days before we put it into the finished product jars. So I've mentioned SCOBY a couple of times already. Some of you might ask, what's a SCOBY? SCOBY is a symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast. It's the mother. It's what makes kombucha what it is. We have a very beautiful scoby over here and we're going to show you that right now. Take a look at that bad boy. We've got five or six layer, thick layers of uh, scoby in there. A couple of thin ones in there. It's actually floating a little bit above the tea. <coughs> this thing is really healthy. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, I had some friends that uh, gave me a part of their scoby to get this thing started and it worked very, very well. Um, it's easy to pass these things on. Keep a little bit of tea in the bottom, cup or two, a couple layers of scoby and you're good to go. All right, so you see I've got my funnel, my little strainer, fruit in the bottom of my jar here. I'm gonna attempt to uh, empty some of my tea that's been fermenting for four days into the jar without spilling. That'll be interesting because I haven't done it without spilling yet, but we're gonna try. We're gonna leave a little bit at the top of that jar because this stuff, as it's fermenting, it's 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 giving off some 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 gases and such. So you're gonna to need to burp this every day. If you don't burp it, um, you're gonna run into a little bit of a problem. I was using some canning jars. If you take a look at that cover, you see that dent in that cover there? Yeah, I forgot to burp it for a day. It built up enough pressure that it dented the cover. As you can see, I left a little bit of tea in the bottom of that jar, along with that scoby. I've got three full jars here, so I'm going to put the remaining fruit, spread it out between those jars right now. And I caught a little bit of fallout in my little strainer. There we go. I'm going to put these covers on and I'm going to put them on tight. But like I just mentioned earlier, we're going to want to burp these every day because they're definitely going to be giving off a little bit of some gases. And they will dent the cover. And we don't want it to explode when we open it later on. So now I just need to rinse these off. And I'm going to set these on the counter for four days. I'm going to keep them at room temperature, out of the sunlight, <clears throat> and just let that ferment in an anaerobic fermentation. Now when we're done, after the tea sits in the, with the fruit in the bottom of the jar for four days, I take a funnel and I take my little strainer and I pour it through there, like I just did into my, whether it's a bottle or whatever kind of container, glass container you're gonna put that in, all the fruit gets caught in here and then I can just dump that out. Now I did that ahead of time, 
it saves me a little time makes it a little quicker to do and kind of like filling a pot with water you can figure out how to fill a bottle so didn't uh, show you how to do that today my tea is at room temperature as I stir it I can I can tell that there's the sugar is fully dissolved in there because I can't hear any crystals scraping against the bottom just a spoon so now I'm going to dump that back into the jar here with my SCOBY and I'm going to let that ferment for four days and then we repeat the process He's in the jar, Scoby's looking good. Put just a permeable cloth on the top, a rubber band around it so it can breathe. And four days later, the tea's ready to put in the jars with some fruit to flavor it. So I really like this stuff. It's uh, helped me out a lot. The store-bought stuff tastes terrible. It gets a little pricey and making it on your own, it's rewarding. Even if you're Turn into a mad scientist but hey um, it's not that hard to do it's got a lot of health benefits in my case it's helped with my heartburn so you know if you want to try and make your own give it a try i think you'll like it too So we have a glass of this in the morning, a glass in the evening, maybe sometime during the middle of the day. I go through about 16 ounces or so every day now. Keeps the gut healthy, keeps everything in check, keeps heartburn down. Cheers. <laughs>